Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I am very excited because today I'm doing a dedicated video all about the updated board and rules to the My Bad TBR game that I created for my channel back in, I believe it was late 2020. The My Bad TBR game was based on the classic board game of Sorry, which was created by the Parker Brothers. It was one of my favorite games growing up. And when I was seeing all of these great TBR games being created, I wanted to go ahead and make one myself. And when I was thinking about what I might want to do, this was one of the first things that popped into my head. So I created a board game, added the prompts, made up the rules and everything like that. And I had a really, really good time with it, but I only ended up doing, I think, four or five rounds before I stopped filming booktube videos. Now that I'm back, I did want to bring back the My Bad TBR game. However, I was kind of over several of the prompts that were on my old board. Some of them I found very limiting, so if I landed on one, I didn't really feel like I had a lot of options to choose from, and some of them I was just bored with, so I did go ahead and change several of the prompts on my new board, and I've also added and changed a lot of the rules as well. And the reason I did this was to make it more challenging, more dynamic, and yes, even more complicated. And I wanted to do a whole video dedicated to the new board and the new rules just because I had a feeling it could get a little bit long and I didn't want to add it onto a TBR video. So now when I go to do my November TBR, y'all will already know what the deal is and we can just get right into the gameplay and I will try to remember to link a card up above for you where it'll take you to the original announcement video for the my bad tbr game so you can kind of see how it was versus how it is now if you are interested but without further ado I'm gonna flip you around and we're gonna go over the board which is mostly the same and then the rules which have changed so let's get into it all right everyone here is my updated game board the board itself has not changed much the primary change has to to do with the prompts. I removed several of the prompts I had on my old board and added new prompts, some of which were inspired by various people in the online bookish community. And when we're going around the board and talking about the prompts, I will try to remember to notate where I got the inspiration from. I would say that the biggest change that came with the board is regard to these safety zone squares right here. On the previous board, each of these squares had the title of a specific book on my TBR, but that's not really flexible, especially if they're written in pen, because my physical TBR is constantly changing. Maybe I unhauled book I was no longer interested in reading or if I did land on one of the squares and read the book then I would have to change the title that was on the board and it would be difficult if it was written in pen. So I wanted to have a more flexible and dynamic use for these sections. So for now they're just going to remain blank but anytime I land on one I then have to choose a reading challenge prompt to satisfy. I typically take part in several reading challenges during the year and this will start to help me satisfy some of those prompts. That is really all I wanted to address with the board itself because really not a whole lot has changed with it but I have made several changes and additions to the rules of the game simply to shake it up and make it a bit more complicated. So as you can see on the board I do have all of the pawns for all four colors here and in the original game on which this is based which is obviously the classic board game of Sorry, this is meant to be played with at least two players and the goal of every player is to get all of their players out of start around the board and into their respective home bases. Now I'm obviously playing on my own and in the past iterations of this game I was only playing with one color. However I have decided to increase the challenge by playing all four colors on the board at one time. My goal is still going to be to get all of these pawns around the board and into their home bases. Of course this will likely take a great deal of time. There are definitely going to be obstacles and challenges that will prevent me from meeting this goal and I will get to that when we're talking about the rules and stuff but that is all part of the adventure. Now you can see we have a soldier down here. This guy was taken long ago by Miss Nola and we're going to keep playing in his honor. So instead of having 16 pawns, I will have 15. Now I did want to make a similar note that I did when I was originally talking about the rules of this game that you could absolutely make this into a competitive TBR game, playing with up to four people, adjusting the rules as necessary and making it competitive where you are trying to prevent people from getting to their home base. However, as it is just me, I'm not making this competitive. It's simply a fun challenge to see how long it will take me to get through one full round of the game where all of the pawns make it into their home bases and once I've done that I will do a special surprise. All right so now that that's out of the way let's go ahead and get into the cards and the rules. One of the rules that I enacted when I was just playing with one color is that I was allowed to have a pawn on the playing field at all time. In the original game all four pawns begin here in the start section and you must draw a one or two to get out. However, as it can take a while for that to happen and we want to make sure we are always making progress, I am keeping the rule where I am allowed to have a pawn on the playing field at all time, only this time I am allowing it to be with all colors. Okay, so I have now moved one of each colored pawn onto the free space that is outside of the start. Now one of the reasons why I do want to have one pawn of each color on the board at all times is because I am now not going to only be having cards determine my moves, 
but which color I move at any given time. So these are going to be my movement cards. These are just like standard decks of playing cards with the standard deck numbers. And these, each of these cards have a color. So I will draw two cards every round, one with the movement number and one with the color that I will be moving. Now, as a reminder, all of the spaces directly outside of start are free spaces. So I do not have to add a book to my TBR if I have moved upon out onto that free space or if I'm going around the board and I land on a free space. So that is exactly what it is. It is a free space. I can choose to add a book to that if I want to. Say for example, I have something I need to read for the month and I won't be able to add it because none of the prompts fit it. I can use the free space and definitely add a book. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the cards. The first card is the ace. And with an ace, you have the opportunity to get one of your guys in start, out of start, and onto the playing field, assuming there's not one guy already in front here. Or you can just move your pawn one and use the prompt associated with it. So for example, if I move this guy one, I would have to read the prompt associated with a favorite booktuber rec. Next, we have number two. And if you're wondering, y'all, my card deck has two separate decks of cards. One is a special edition deck based on the Darker Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. And then the other is based on A Court of Thorns and Roses. So number two. Number two is also one where you have the ability to move one of your pawns out onto the free space. Or you can, of course, move it ahead too and read the prompt associated with it. So if I did that, I would read a book based on true crime. However, two can also serve as a punishment because if you draw two, you have to draw again. So if you're not moving a guy out here onto this free space and you are moving ahead to and reading the prompt, you then have to draw again and will likely have another prompt that you have to add to your TBR. Numbers three, five, and six are all very straightforward movement cards. You will move the pawn, the number that you have drawn, and there is no additional reward or punishment associated. You just have to read a book that is associated with the prompt on the board. Now, number four is a backwards prompt. So if you draw a four, you have to move backwards four. Now, in a lot of ways, this is going to be disadvantageous because it's going to be taking you away from your home base. However, if you're in a situation here and you have to move backwards four, one, two, three, four, this guy is now actually primed to go directly into his safety zone and then into his home base. So he will be primed to get into his home base without having to go around the board. Now, of course, this entirely depends on the color that I draw and where that pawn is situated on the board as to whether it will be advantageous. But like I said, a lot of the times it is not going to be. All right, we already discussed five and six, so we're moving on to seven. So with number seven, you have the ability to move forward seven, or you also have the ability to split the movement between two pawns. Now, this can also be strategic based on where your pawns are on the board. For example, if this guy was sitting right here and I was able to move red on the round that I drew seven, I could use one to do one, two, and then move this guy one, two, three, four, five. So now I have one red pawn in home base and he is safe for the remainder of the game. Nothing can happen to him. So in that way, it is strategic. Seven can also be considered kind of a reward in that I am allowed to double up on prompts if I want to. So this guy landed on to read a book with red on the cover. Now, if I have already chosen a book for that month with red on the cover, I have the ability to double up on prompts, thereby not adding a book to my TBR. Eight is another one where you will move forward eight. However, it may have the opportunity to be either a reward or a punishment. And that is because I have the ability to swap prompts if I don't like the prompt that I've landed on. However, I don't get to choose which prompt I switch to. If I wanted to move this guy eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I landed on to read a book with green on the cover, and I did not like that prompt for some reason, or I did not like the options associated with that prompt, I could choose to swap prompts. However, I have to randomly choose the prompt that I switch it with. I have all of the prompts from the board in a cup, kind of like a TBR jar situation, and I will have to randomly pull one of those prompts. So I could get a prompt that I think is better or a prompt that I think is worse. So that's what I mean when I say that it could either be a reward or a punishment. And once I draw, I cannot take it back. So I have to choose before I draw whether or not I want to swap prompts or not. For number 10, you can move forward 10 or backwards one. Now, why would anybody want to move backwards one? Well, this could either be strategic, like moving backwards four, or it could just be a matter of not liking the prompt if you move forward 10. So if I moved this guy 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I landed on the prompt to do a random letter generator and that letter would choose my read. If I didn't like that, and instead I would rather move backwards one to mystery thriller, that could be a thing as well. For the most part, it's just going to be a matter of prompts or strategy. All right, so that is it for the numbers. Let's go ahead and move on to the face cards, which are, for the most part, rewards. 
a jack is going to be a skip card. So it is going to allow me to skip a move. So if I choose a movement card and the color associated is going to land on a prompt that I just don't want to land on, or if there are just really no good movements associated with the number, I can skip it. So I would hang on to the jack until I'm ready to use it. The queen is perhaps the best of all because it allows you to move one of your players on the field into their home base. So if I drew a queen and then say the color blue, I would be able to take this guy right here and move him directly into home base where he is safe for the rest of the game. Again, this only counts towards pawns actively on the board. I cannot take a player from start and move them into home base. So if it gets to a point where I have nobody to move into home base, well, then I just kind of forfeit that card. I did also want to mention with regard to the jack that it cannot be retroactively applied. So I cannot apply the skip to any of the past movements I have done before drawing the jack. It is to future movements only. The king is our get out of jail free card. So of course, there are punishments associated with not finishing a TBR that I've selected during any given month. If I have a physical book that's on my TBR that I don't read, I either have to automatically move it to next month's TBR and still choose the same amount of rounds during the game, or I have to choose to unhaul it. But with the king, I can go ahead and skip all that. Now, if I don't physically own the book already, I do still have to make the same decision. I either have to move it to next month's TBR or just remove it from my want to read list, basically, is what happens. And then we have our jokers, which are going to essentially act as the sorry card in this game. So if I pull a joker and a color card, I have to move one of the pawns from the playing field back to their respective starts, and I have to do the punishment prompt associated with it. So for example, on the card that I just drew, it says intimidating, and that means to read an intimidating book. And I can interpret that a number of ways. It could be a very large book, or it could be a book that I'm maybe nervous about reading for whatever reason. So, so say I drew the Joker and read, I could choose to take this guy, move him back to start, and then I have to choose an intimidating book. This is also a situation where I can only apply it to pawns that are actively on the playing field. Now, of course, as we get to the end of the game where most of the pawns are in their safety zone or their home bases, there might not be many pawns on the playing field. And if that's the case, then I'll just skip it. I don't have to worry about putting a pawn back into the start if they're already safely in their safety zone or their home base. All right, so that is primarily all the rules. Let me really quickly just show you one of these color cards here. So that is an example of what I will be drawing every single round along with a movement card and that will determine what color pawn I move and how many spaces I move them. Now I will likely have to make some adjustments as we get to the end of the game and it's getting to the point where I don't really have many pawns on the playing field to actually move. I don't know whether I'm going to do a punishment for every time I can't move or if I'm just going to allow myself to move whichever pawns are on the playing field and not bother with the color cards. I haven't decided that. If you have any thoughts or feedback, please let me know. I'm happy to hear. I imagine it's going to take me a long time to get to that point. So it's not something that I have to figure out now, but it is something that I want to keep on my radar. And lastly, let's go ahead and go through the prompts on the board. So starting from over here, we have Summer, and that is to read a book with Summer Vibes. I did get the inspiration from Becca and the books with her newest Bookopoly board. I really liked the seasonal prompts that she had, so I incorporated them with my board as well. This is to read a book with a 5W, so who, what, when, where, why. I highly anticipate read, book with red on the cover, read a thriller or mystery, book box. I do have a book box option on every single side of the board just to make sure that I am reading the books that are sent to me in book boxes. Overhyped, read a book that I've heard a lot of great things about but could possibly be overhyped. Random number generator, true crime, continue a series, read a book that was recommended by a favorite booktuber, that free space, someone's TBR. So I have to read a book that is on the TBR of someone that I follow on booktube. So for example, if I'm doing November's TBR, I would watch some November TBR videos and then choose a book from somebody's November TBR. Name, number, or place. I have to read a book with a name, number, or place in the title. And pet pick. We all know what that means. We're going to try it, y'all. I don't know how well it will work, but eventually we will try a pet pick. Here's the fall vibes. Again, here's the book box. Published or set between 2000 and 2019. Another recommendation taken from Becca and the books. Green on the cover. Read a book from one of my favorite authors. Book club pick. Second chance. So this could be a book that I DNF'd and give a second chance. This could be a Maybe an author that I've given up on. Read a romance. Start a series. This is random emoji generator also taken from Becca in the book. She gave me a lot of inspiration y'all so I would use a random emoji generator to choose my read. Debut author. Free space. Read a book set in a foreign country so basically any book not in America. Multiple timelines. Goodreads pick. So basically I would scroll through my Goodreads feed and basically pick one of the first books 
that I see recommended on my Goodreads feed that I already have on my TBR. Winter Vibes, Book Talk Fave. So I have to pick a book that is being hyped by Book Talk. I don't have Book Talk, but I figure that there's probably a way for me to figure this out. Read a Fantasy, Yellow on the Cover, New Release, TBR Veteran, Book Box Again. This is Random Color Generator, also an inspiration from Becca. New to me author, Start a Series, Read the Highest Rated Book on my TBR. Put him back. Free space, read a nonfiction, Goodreads Choice Awards. So I have to go through the Goodreads Choice Awards and read a winner or it could also be a nominee and it could be from present or past years. Basically any year that there has been a Goodreads Choice, I can choose a winner or a nominee and a diverse read. All right, here we have Spring Vibes, published or set before 1999, another Becca inspiration, most recent purchase or acquisition, blue on the cover, multiple POVs, beautiful book, friend pick, historical fiction, letter, random letter generator, continuous series, I believe I have continuous series and start a series on here twice. If not, continuous series is definitely on here twice because I want to be sure I'm reading my series. Shortest book on my TBR, free space, mood read, book box, husband pick. All right. And that is it. That is the new board. That is all of the new rules and changes that I have made. Please let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinions. And are you excited to see me play this for November? I know I'm excited and a little bit nervous. There are a bunch of like punishments and rewards that go along with this game. So who knows what will happen on any given gameplay. And again, once I get all of those pawns around the board and into their home bases, I will try to do a special surprise. So just stay tuned for that. It's going to be a long road, y'all, but we are going to get there. Also, please let me know if you have any thoughts or ideas of what I could possibly do as I'm nearing the end of gameplay when I'm not going to have very many pawns on the board for movement purposes and what I could possibly do instead should I add punishments to the board anytime I can't move or what should I do? Should I allow myself some grace some flexibility? I would love to know. I am not a creative person by any means. It was very difficult for me to create this board to come up with the prompts for the board. I, as you heard, I had to take a lot of inspiration from elsewhere. So I appreciate the online bookish community's feedback so very much when it comes to this. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the game, on the rules. Is there anything that you think I should change or add or remove from my new gameplay? please let me know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video.